Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to PEDS 21. Please help me in welcoming the president of the American Academy of Pediatrics, Dr. Colleen Kraft. Good afternoon and thank you. On behalf of the American Academy of Pediatrics, it's my privilege to welcome you all to Orlando and to our 16th annual Pediatrics for the 21st Century Symposium. I hope you're all as excited to be here as I am. <laughs> there you go. Set it up there. Technology is rapidly changing the face of healthcare, and the American Academy of Pediatrics believes that pediatricians should be at the center of shaping this practice of the future. Today's programs are going to explore these new technologies and innovations and what we can do to improve patient care and communication. Today, you're going to hear from pediatricians and how they've embraced technology in practical applications that connect rather than fragment the medical home. Because we've all had the experience of fragmentation because of telehealth. We want to change that. We want to show you how we connect. You're going to hear from some specialists who use telehealth to co-manage patients with their primary care pediatricians. You're going to hear about mHealth and wearable technology and how that data can be used to follow patients' progress in a meaningful way. You'll hear the important perspective of a parent who looks to his pediatrician to use technology to improve access and communication for his child. And you'll hear from pediatric innovators in this space who might discuss that one idea that you could use to advance child health in your practice. I hope by the end of the day, you'll leave here inspired and ready to do what you want to do to help shape the future of pediatrics, improve the quality of care, and improve the lives of the children you take care of. The PEDS 21 planning group has lined up an impressive group of experts, and I'd like to introduce one of them to you now. Dr. Chelsea Bodner serves on the executive committee of the AAP section on telehealth care. Dr. Bodner is a general pediatrician whose career has spanned private practice, time as a policy fellow at the Institute of Medicine, and her role of director of children's health care quality at a large federally qualified health center in New York. Dr. Bodner is a graduate of Harvard Medical School with a degree in the social history of medicine from Oxford. She recently moved back to her home state of Montana, where she was just selected as a 2018 Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Clinical Scholar Fellow. She's using this to support her work in the use of telemedicine to build a statewide collaborative of pediatricians who were able to offer telemedicine as an extension of the medical home, both after hours and in underserved areas. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Chelsea Bodner. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kraft. We're so lucky to have her. Let me see if I can make this work. All right. Seems, seems to be working. Um, I do. I, I just want to pause for a second and think about how wonderful and lucky we are to have Dr. Kraft, who's been such an inspiring leader. Uh, through what has been a tumultuous time for children around the world, and an AAP leader who has been incredibly supportive of using technology to advance child health. Her leadership in this space is remarkable, and it comes in a time where there are so many opportunities. Today's agenda is exciting. Our pre presenters, they're dynamic and they're thought-provoking. And we have five speakers for you here in the theater. And we'll have three now, take a break, and come back to hear the final two, when we will then open the floor to questions from everyone. Uh, in addition to our speakers, and during the break, we hope you will go see the exciting 12 electronic posters that are also a part of today's program. Since I'm getting the technology to work, I'll put down the paper. 
Uh, our poster pre presenters are sharing current research, quality improvements, case studies that all focus on pediatric care providers who are currently using technology to support everything from asthma care, uh, mental health referrals, family engagement, and even critical care after natural disasters. But this is an interactive session, or it will be. Um, we're going to be using the AAP Experience mobile app. Does everyone have that downloaded? Yes. Anyone not have it downloaded? Look to your neighbor. They will help you. Um, uh, you can get that off of the app store by searching for AAP Experience. Or you can, in any browser, go to peds. Is it NCF? I think that's wrong on there. NCNF.io. Uh, when you have a question, and you can do this in real time, you don't have to wait till the end, you can go ahead and click on the audience response section, look for PEDS 21, and enter your questions. And even if you don't have your own question, you can look at what other people are saying, and you can sort of crowdsource and push questions that you would like to hear answered up towards the top. These are the questions we're going to use to later facilitate a discussion after our fifth speaker. So, also for any of you who are interested in using social media, we are at hashtag AAP18. So, everyone's got their app, we're all sitting down, let's go ahead and get started. It is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Christopher B. Jones. Chris is a successful entrepreneur, investor, best-selling author, and father of three children, Chris, Lauren, and Jackson. Chris has served on multiple community and national boards, including the Misericordia University Board of Trustees and the board of his local public broadcasting affiliate, Studios Channel 44. Please welcome Chris. Thank you, Chelsea, uh, for that kind introduction. As you heard, my name is Chris Jones, and I am the father of three beautiful children, and I'm also a technology innovator. I have worked in many spaces in this industry and dedicated my life's work to it. So by definition, I am an early adopter of technology, and I embrace its potential to change how we conduct business and live our lives. My goal here today is to set the stage for the reason we are all here to understand where various modes of health technology are going and how they can better our children's health. For today, I'm not here to talk to you as a technology expert who develops apps to, makes, to make life's tasks easier and more efficient, but to talk to you as a dad of three children, a dad who consumes technology to improve my family's quality of life on a daily basis much like most of you and others in society do on some level. Just stop to think about how technology reaches each and every one of us. It's to the point that we now take some of these efficiencies and conveniences for granted and don't think how much they affect us. For example, like many of you, I have an iPhone. I make calls, I take photos, I have apps. I download apps for fun, like Subway Surf, Surfer or Candy Crush. In truth, my wife does that. I don't do that. Um, but I also download apps to make my life easier and more efficient. Through my phone, I can search for answers with Siri. I can link my phone to my credit cards. I can get notified where my friends are and even order my grocery list and track its progress right to my doorstep. The AAP NCE has adopted an app that Chelsea just talked to you about that I'm sure you all appreciate or will appreciate throughout this conference. It makes navigating this large conference easier and personal. Easier and more personal are themes that permeate through consumer technology goals. Technology affords the ability to spend more time doing 
what I find more important with my day. And it supports how I navigate my life. Life was not like that 20, even 10 short, short years ago. Just pause for one second and think. In my home, Alexa, she's a household name. If I repeatedly said that in my house 10 years ago, my kids would think that they had a new smart sibling in the house. This technology has been available for four short years and it's disrupted how we manage our days. My children have also come to understand the power of technology. They have grown up with tablets, smartphones, and honestly, they know no other way. They will be the next innovators. As a dad, I often look at the idea of technology bettering my children's health in many aspects. I feel strongly that health is one of the most important things we have, and technology that empowers us as parents and caregivers is where I believe technology can make the biggest difference. So let's take another step back. And as a parent and as a healthcare consumer, I will reflect on some of the things, some of the ways I would like to see technology improve my interaction with my child's healthcare. I realize that the things I will discuss may not be feasible for everyone at this time, but these are some of the things that I personally think can benefit consumers and pediatricians alike. Keep in mind, much of what is going to be discussed at today's PEDS 21, at this event there are going to be desires of parents like myself who are thinking a lot about how to better use technology as it relates to healthcare. So let me ask you guys a quick question. How many pediatricians and pediatric providers in the audience have received an ever-dreaded text message from a parent that includes a question or a picture of a rash, a picture of a cut or a laceration, an OMG, uh, or a sad face emoji? So I'll admit, <laughs> This is how I often communicate with my pediatrician, and I have sent him messages like this. But the reason, let's think about this, the reason I have opted to send those text messages to my pediatrician is that text messaging is my preferred way of communicating, importantly, with the people I care most about. It's also quick, it's concise, and it's focused. Text messaging allows me to gather my thoughts and formulate a specific question that I need assurance on. Also, for certain instances, if I include a picture, that is almost as good as face-to-face -face interaction with my doctor. The other reason that I prefer texting my pediatrician is that I can effectively and efficiently deliver care or ask for care and hopefully get some reassurance without waiting on hold from, on a traditional landline phone um, or having to message my pediatrician and it, to go for two or three times through his assistance or through his office. See, with text messaging, my doctor sees exactly what I wrote. And hopefully, from the doctor's side, he gets the message directly back to me. If I have a follow-up question, I could ask without the issue of hanging up the phone and having the, oh man, I forgot to ask moment. Then if I had to call back, I'd have to do it all over again. Terribly inefficient. Plus, with read receipts, I don't have to worry if my pediatrician got the message. So, I'm sure a lot of you could relate. I get a lot of push notifications all the time to help me keep track with my Google Calendar or otherwise to keep me informed. I'd love to get these notifications on my child's vaccines, or scheduled health visits to help me keep their health maintenance on track. By a show of hands, how many of you in the audience use FaceTime to communicate with friends, loved ones, and important people in your life? So, I do as well. If you use FaceTime, think about why. For me, I would say it allows me to share emotion and facial expressions with my children that I would other not, otherwise not see and share. It gives me a sense of context and environment. It makes me feel almost like I am there. 
See, telemedicine, as a parent, offers many of the same benefits to a face-to-face -face pediatrician visit. And honestly, you know, penciling in a lunch hour visit with your pediatrician can prove challenging, especially when a can't-miss conference call, it, it absorbs the bulk of my afternoon. See, telemedicine eases this problem. Through video or web chat, I may be able to follow up on a prescription or diagnosis with my pediatrician while not changing my busy work schedule. This improves my convenience and efficiency dramatically. I could finish my work at home, and my child gets the help he needs or she needs without waiting. It's a win-win. If the pediatrician is running behind, that has less effect on me, right? As I can be productive while waiting for the telemedicine visit to start. Also, it could decrease healthcare expenditures. These visits may cost less, and plus, as a working parent, I save in travel expenses and time off work that largely goes unpaid. As I said earlier, apps are what I develop for a living. I'm always thinking, what can I do to improve my consumer's experience? See, all of us as individuals are looking for apps that improve our lives through efficiency and improved experiences. I believe the future is here right now, as medical apps have already initiated a huge sea change in how patients relate to doctors and vice versa. One of the things that patients and parents have always wanted but haven't been able to get is more control over their medical decisions until today. Apps are already empowering ordinary people to have more knowledge and say in their medical decisions. Personally, I think this is stellar. It's stellar news for the people who have always wanted to take a more active role in their own healthcare, but have traditionally been stymied by a lack of visibility into their own personal health data. Medical apps are beginning to level the playing field in patients' favor and will ultimately change the future of healthcare forever. A recent study showed 80% of millennials expect a doctor to offer key services via apps, either now or within the next one to two years. And a whopping 71% of millennials say that smartphones and apps have changed the way they manage their health and wellness. That is absolutely true. I know if I'm more engaged in my children's health, I can feel better about the decisions that they're made and then I could adhere to the pediatrician's plan for them. Case studies have shown that patients recording info in their apps report more honest and reliable info than what they actually tell their doctors or healthcare professionals through recall. Plus, you don't need to remember to write things down. In this way, apps can become the go-to patient diaries for candid info that patients might have trouble sharing with the doctors face-to-face, -face, and give truer real-life data that not just vital signs found in the office or by parent or patient recall. For me, I know when my pediatrician asks me, how many times did that happen, or what did that rash look like yesterday, I either have to guesstimate, or if I wasn't there, call my wife to ask if she remembered. Either way, we we're guessing. But in contrast, if data is entered real-time into apps, I think I can give more comprehensive and a more accurate picture of my child's problem. The top 10 mobile health apps produce 4 million free and 300,000 paid downloads each and every day. Not only is there a market for this type of app, but the market is large and it's strong. By next year, 50% of all smartphone users will have a health app on their phones. By next year, the entire mobile health market will total $26 billion. There is no doubt in my mind that parents are going to use health apps. I use some of them. The problem I have is that I don't know which ones are reliable and which ones are sound medically. I would like my pediatrician to help me better understand what apps are appropriate for my child's health care, and I'd also like some insight on how we can use them more effectively. Pediatricians have always been helpful in recommending books on parenting to me, 
I think it's time for pediatricians to start recommending top healthcare apps. My hope is that doctor recommended healthcare apps can jumpstart my children's interest in living a healthy life. For instance, I'd love to know which apps are best to engage my kids in proper eating habits and physical activity. I'd like to know what apps to avoid, importantly, because those apps may have a detrimental or negative impact on my children. Vetted app and technology recommendations are particularly important to me as a parent because if I need help in these areas, I'm going to reach for and rely on technology to help. My kids all have Fitbits and Apple Watches. They enjoy looking at their steps and the different activities, fitness activities they can monitor with them. My kids love information, especially about themselves and anything that ends up with gamification uh, or is very interesting to them. If I can motivate them with technology that they are comfortable with, it's a win-win. Most consumer applications are focused on fitness more than healthcare. The more we make our wearables integrate with our healthcare, the more motivated we will be. It is about putting our health in our, in our hands and empowering ourselves and our children to be responsible with their health. The public has long had a love-hate relationship with technology in general and digital technology in particular. Whether the activity involves retail, transportation, communications, or anything else, virtually every advance is met with a combination of intrigue and trepidation before either settle to our daily routines. Even now, as the world comes to rely on digital services for many functions, consumers are increasingly worried about their privacy, their security, and even their physical safety. Clearly, we still have a long way to go before we see a Star Wars-style medical droid performing unassisted bionic hand replacements. But in truth, healthcare has long been a divided field when it comes to technology, with cutting-edge medicines and medical devices posing a stark contrast to the aging infrastructure and process that support patient relations and record-keeping. Like virtually all sectors of the economy, healthcare is on the cusp of significant disruption as digital services make it easier to locate and consume highly customized and perhaps substantially lower cost care. As with all past technology revolutions, the best way to overcome mistrust is to deliver positive results. Thank you guys so much for your time.